Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Psst, Mother. David, you scared me half to death coming in like a thief. Where's Claudia? Upstairs, feeding the baby. Oh, good. What on earth are we whispering for? I don't want her to hear us talk. Isn't it allowed anymore? Not on Claudia's birthday. What's going on? I told you, it's her birthday. Here's some boxes and things. I'll, I'll put them behind the sofa pillows. Yeah. Say, tell me, Mother. Has she been wondering about what I was going to give her today? If she has, she hasn't admitted it. Hmm. That's strange. Claudia is usually so curious about presents. And so anxious. Maybe she's growing up. Yeah, she's as grown up now as as I want her to be. And you're as ungrown up as I want my son-in-law to be, too. Calling Claudia from New York six times today just because it was her birthday? Her birthday had nothing to do with it. I just happened to like talking to my wife. Any objections to that? What do you think, David? What do you think about what? Hello, David. What do you think about none of your business? Hello, darling. Hello. Did the baby eat his dinner? Down to the last drool. You know, he's getting so he doesn't mind vegetables, even. Then he can't be much of a man. Happy birthday, Mrs. Norton. Thank you, Mr. Norton. For the umpty-umpt time today. Oh, David, it was such a long day. For no reason I missed you more today than usual. That's what you get for calling us six times. Funny, but when I hang up the receiver, I'm more lonesome than before I pick it up. I, I guess that's when I remember what I'm missing. Well, mm. you really make a man feel as if it's worth coming home. We do our best. Happy birthday, Mrs. Norton. Is happy, Mr. Norton. Oh, the baby winked at me today. Well, that's a nice present. It's all the present I want. You and the baby winking and Mama hanging around by the fire. Well, that's too bad. What's too bad, David? Tell me what's too bad. Oh, I brought you home a present, but if you have too many already... Oh, now, why, why then... did you go and do that spending money? Silly. It is, eh? We haven't got that kind of money to throw around giving each other presents. It's we silly. haven't, eh? No, we haven't. No. And you don't have to give me presents just because it happens to be my birthday to prove to me you love me. I don't, eh? It is just a silly hand-me-down tradition. It is, eh? Silly business of giving presents on a birthday. Mm-hmm. After all, it's no fault of mine I'm having a birthday, is it? No. Of course, you're going to blame me. Why not? I blame you for everything, Mama. That's what I'm for. So, you, um... You don't want my present. I think it's darling of you, David, to go to all the trouble of buying something, but I just want you to know that, well, I don't... What is it? Ooh, just a little something I picked up. Nothing expensive, I hope. Now, stop worrying. Here you are. A little box. Oh, what a sweet little box. It really is little, too. Well... Oak trees from little acorns, girl. This is not a little acorn. It's not? No. Well, what can it be? I think we can't imagine. Well, open it. Oh, David, I hope you haven't been silly and extravagant. Once a man has gone to the foolish extravagance of acquiring a wife, nothing he ever does again seems either expensive or foolish. Now, that was sweet, darling. It's all right. Or was it? Mama, can you guess what's in the box? Mama would rather wait and see. Mama has some self-control. Mama sounds very dull... Look, it's beautiful. What is it? What is it? Well, can't you see what it is? It's a, it's a, it, it, it's a pin. David, it's lovely. Oh, it's not much. Not much? Mm. Well, it's a pin, and it's a, it's, it's a lovely pin. It's, um, um, a, a peacock. That's what it is. It's a peacock. It's to go on a pocketbook. Pocketbook? Mm-hmm. Why can't I just wear it in a dress or a hat or because something? Because you don't wear hats. Oh, well, I wear dresses. It doesn't belong on a dress. Who says? The man at the store where I bought it. Oh, what This you know? peacock belongs on a pocketbook. Honestly, I never heard of such nonsense. Whoever saw peacocks on a pocketbook? I don't care about peacocks on a pocketbook. I care about them now. This peacock belongs on a black suede pocketbook. He would look stunning there. I shall wear him where I shall wear him, and it will not be on a black suede pocketbook. David, I love him. I'm devoted to him. Mm-hmm. Well, why won't you wear him on a black suede pocketbook? Because I don't want to. Because I don't want to. Oh, shut up. Or because you don't own a black suede pocketbook. And because I don't own one either. I don't want a black suede pocketbook. I never did. I never will. They rub off. Mm, she's sweet, isn't she? What she doesn't have, she doesn't want. My daughter has a beautiful spirit. Now, hush up, you two. <laughs> 
You, David, have given me the present, and now your part is over. And Mama's only Mama. My, what a handsome bird he is. Who, me? Well, you're not so bad, but I was speaking of the bird you just gave me. I think I'll wear him in the, right, in the, the middle. In the middle of this black suede pocketbook. I told you, darling, I haven't got... David, what's in this box? Oh, uh, look and see. Oh, honestly, you fool. You haven't gone and bought me a black suede pocketbook, have you? Well, I bought you the pen, so I thought I ought to buy you the black suede pocketbook to match. It's so extravagant, darling. If you keep on being so extravagant, David, I won't have anything to put in the pocketbook. I'll give you a penny for luck. Oh, birthdays are so divine. Not that I need a birthday to make me happy, but they are divine. Are you going to be the kind of woman who says things are divine? Yes, divine. No. Such a divine word. <laughs> I've always wanted to use it, but I never had the opportunity before. It's funny, I didn't think of presents all day long. You didn't. Have. Not once. It's this morning when David didn't give me one before leaving the house. Oh, oh, now we're oh, hearing the true story, David. Mm-hmm. Oh, will you look at this bag? Isn't it beautiful? Put the pin on it. Now go away, Mama. Leave me alone. These are my presents. David, you have the most exquisite taste. You really like it? Like it? Oh, it feels so chic. Well, it doesn't look very good with those brown calf shoes. I'll now listen. That. Just because I have a beautiful new bag doesn't mean you have to criticize my favorite shoes. Mm -mm. But the fact is that they don't go very well together. All right, all right, all right. I only carry the bag when I have on my tan shoes. Tan shoes Suit and you? black suede. Hmm. The tan shoes will match the peacock's tail feathers. David, you're really sweet. Just because I brought you a little present? Is that no, it? darling, not. Just because you brought me a little present because I know what it meant for you to buy it for me. Well, I... I must say that I can't stand the sight of that bag with those shoes you're wearing. Can't you think of no. anything to admire instead? It just seems to me that you have a black suede bag. You have to have shoes to match. Listen, who do you think you are, a millionaire? I don't have to be a millionaire so my wife can wear suede shoes, do I? Oh, Mama, it's awful to be married to a man who's a perfectionist. It's so expensive. Here, try these on, see if they fit. Shoes? Shoes? Oh, where'd they come from? From the store. Where do you think I made them? You bought me shoes? Yes, I bought you shoes. Oh, for heaven's sake. You don't have to tell me I bought you shoes. I, I know I bought you shoes. They're black suede. David, I love them. You are an idiot. That's the thanks I get. It's all the thanks you deserve. Spending your hard-earned money like like water. Oh, look at these stunning shoes. Look, they fit me perfectly. They're not too small. No. They make your foot look small. Why do people always object to another person's foot looking small? Look, I can wiggle my toes and see. I don't see. Mm, they do look small. Stop fussing. I told the man your size, and he said they'd fit, but they, they do look small. David, a good shoe is supposed to make a person's foot look small. That's why they're so... David, these shoes must have cost a fortune. They're such beautiful quality. Money, 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 money. Is that all you can think of? Well, it's a good thing one of us thinks of it. Listen, how do you think I look walking in my new shoes? Not bad, from the ankles down. Mm, I always did say you had a pretty nifty ankle. Oh, is that what you always mm. did say? Oh, I feel absolutely wonderful. Well, if you can get those shoes to come back over here, there's something else that goes with them. David, you've gone out of your mind completely berserk. Well, if a man is berserk because he buys his wife a few things she's been needing desperately, well, then I... You sound as if I were going around threadbare. You wouldn't buy yourself anything if you were going around threadbare. Here. Black suede gloves? Oh, Mama. I'm never going to wear cotton or wool again. I'll never. i your size. Try them on. How'd you guess, David? No guess. Didn't you give me your hand well over a year ago, Mrs. Norton? See, that's what happens, Mama. You mm. give a man your hand, and the next thing you know, he gives you a glove. Oh, was ever a woman so spoiled? Not that I know of. Gloves and shoes and a pocketbook, a pin. Say, uh, what are you going to wear all those things with? With a dress, what do you think? Mm. What dress? Now, how do I know what dress? I'm not in my closet. Do you have a decent dress to your name? Well, what do you think I've been wearing this last year? Well, you can't wear a dress you've been wearing for this last year with shoes you haven't worn for an hour. And why not? Because it just isn't done, that's why. By who? I mean, by, whom? By the leading young women of the community. Oh, honestly. Mm -hmm. By wives of prominent young architects. Well, that just shows, just shows how much you know about wives of prominent young architects. Why, black suede accessories go with practically everything, don't they, Mama? They're very adaptable. See? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't buy my wife black suede accessories to go with practically anything, thank you. And since she doesn't have the sense to realize that 
black suede accessory should be worn with a very special and spiffy black dress. I just simply have to take matters into my own hands. I'll be right back. Hey, where are you going, David? Out into the hall. Oh, Mama. It's so wonderful to be married to an idiot. How you ever inveigled him into marrying you, I'll never know. Mama, did you help him buy these things? I did not. I didn't even know about it. Oh, poor darling. He must have hated every minute of it. You know how he hates shopping and to buy women things. He must have been miserable. He wanted to do it. I know, but even so, it must have been an enormous effort for him. A diamond bracelet wouldn't be half as valuable to me as... Is that effort, Mama? I should hope not. Well, I'd love to have seen him in the store with those sales ladies. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Mrs. Norton, hold this up to your face and see how it looks. David, you idiot, you nincompoop. Yeah, what have I done now? This dress. David, it must have cost a fortune. Well, so what? So what? I'll tell you so what later. Mama. Look at this. Look at the lace around the neck. Look at the fullness of the skirt. Well, look at the way the sleeves turn. David, oh, where'd you ever get your training in shopping for women's clothes? Oh, that is a secret. From now on, darling, you're going to do all my shopping. No, thank you. Oh, this is the... This is the most beautiful dress I ever owned. Oh, David, you fool, you big dope. How can you be so sweet? I just happen to be in love with my wife. And she's going to see that you stay in love with her if it takes until the day she dies. Stop sniffling. I can't help it. It's such such a beautiful dress, and I I love having birthdays. Well, you'd never know it. Before you received your presents, you were happy, and now you're crying. That's the woman in her, David. I'm so happy, but not not because of the dress and the shoes and the gloves and the bag and, and the pin you gave me, darling, but because you gave them to me. Oh, David, could you give me just something else? What? Could you give me a, an, an old handkerchief? I think I could cry. At this time of year, probably more than at any other, there's a desire to extend hospitality, to invite friends and neighbors over for talk and music and refreshment. With a case of Coca-Cola in the house, such invitations can be readily extended. Everybody likes ice-cold Coke. It's all you need to say, welcome. Well, do you approve, Mr. King? Uh, I approve of the whole business. Presents, sentiments, and all. So do I. I remember when Claudia was little. She objected very much to her birthday being so near Christmas. You know why. Well, she's changed her mind about that, eh? David has. Well, Claudia's going to have the opportunity to wear her new clothes very soon. Night after tomorrow. Really? The children were planning to spend New Year's Eve at home. Well, that all changes tomorrow. Good. I like to see them step out. You're only young once. Uh, Not according to old Jared Tucker, who doesn't mind a bit of stepping out himself. Well, see you tomorrow, Mrs. Brown. Goodbye, Joe. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying... Au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.